all right guys welcome back to this next episode um today we're going to be basically customizing windows a little bit applying a few little security settings um doing a little bit of housekeeping and just getting windows ready for your lab so these are things that i normally do whenever i'm about to do the basic configurations to get my server ready um, there are other customizations that's out there, so um, don't hold me to the fire saying that these are the only things that I showed you, because I'm pretty sure there's a whole bunch of other tools and tricks that is out there that you can actually use. Um, you know, it just really depends on your organization um, policies, right? Every organization is going to dictate the rules and regulation for their systems okay but for this lab purposes i'm just going to walk you through a few of the basics that i think that you should know about when you're getting um your system ready i'm going to try to show you a few different ways to do it so i'm going to walk you through the gui version which is the click 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 and then i'm also going to try to show you the powershell version because it's easier in powershell i believe and then also if you haven't started playing with powershell as a server administrator if you're trying to learn servers or any type of windows um it's something you might want to start looking into um powershell saves a lot of time because uh, once you know the commands you can start writing out scripts to build stuff especially when you're doing lab environment it it saves so much time trust me if you're going to be building this over and over and over you technically just need to build it once um test your codes and once you have it you can really redo your lab just by having all the scripts ready to go okay and have like a fully customized um build all right without further ado remember the last time we built out our dc and um it is running so i'm gonna go ahead and apply it so one quick technique before we start i want to show you um so in order um, i'm running on hyper v um there are other different tools if you're using like um, VMware and VirtualBox and all that stuff. Um, there are different features that are out there that you will need to turn on if you're trying to allow your host PC to communicate with your virtual machine. And when I say that, I mean that, for example, if you're trying to copy and paste from the virtual machine to your host and vice versa, on Hyper-V, you need to turn on what's called enhanced mode. So right here, I've already got it turned on. It's just this box checked. This allows you the capabilities for your virtual machine to communicate with your system resources. That's your hard drive, copy and paste, your clipboard, all that stuff. So copy and paste normally uses a clipboard, right? So all those features, once you turn them on um, inside of enhanced setting, that's how you will get your virtual machine to communicate back to your host. So that's tip number one, okay? So enhance mode, make sure you turn it on. And once you do that, you will notice a lot of um, easier way to, to function, All right? So just make sure that is actually turned on. Now, second thing what we're gonna do, we are going to work on disabling data collection now data collection is a way um microsoft basically sends data back and forth so that they can um track and you know identify issues that are happening on, on your system now a lot of folks they think that this might be a privacy issue right and um sometimes you know it's it's like you're, you're prying on what you're doing and a lot of folks that really like it so they tend to block collection and uploading all um, this data and then sending it back to Microsoft. We're not gonna be operating on any type of live network, but I'm gonna also show you how to turn this off and configure it so that, you know, in the future, if you ever had to do it, this is how you'll work. So um, let's get started. So on your box, you wanna go ahead and click start. And the first thing that we're going to do is we need to do the GP edit. So with this is a group policy that is normally set 
for data collection okay and then what you're looking for here you're going to go to computer configuration and you're looking for administrative templates right here and then from there you're going to go to windows components right there right there and then as you can see if you scroll down you should see data collection and preview builds right there and then once you go over onto the right you're looking for whatever is called um allow telemetry so if it's set you will see that configuration right here okay and normally it's um if it's not there you can you can basically add it right so if you um run in a system and you don't see it then normally you can basically put it in there okay so that's one way to look for it to make sure that it's not there another way you can do is the registry right so if you ever went into the regist All right, so this is the registry, and you're going to look for HQ local machine, same way. And then we're going to scroll out to where you see software, and we are looking for policies, Microsoft, Windows, and then right there you see data collection. Now, this is what I'm talking about for the data collection piece, which is here. As you can see, the value set, look at it, it says it's one. This is where you will change this to a zero. Okay. And that's how you basically will turn it off inside of your registry. Right. And that is a, a very first. One. But there's two parts, two parts to this, because once you turn this off here, then you need to go to services and you're also going to be looking for another piece of the pie right so in services you're looking for something that's called connected user experience and telemetry so you want to scroll down until you see that joker right here and that's the next one as you can see automatic so you will go ahead and disable this as well and that's basically how you will take care of um disabling the service and um everything should be off at this point that is a click click version of it okay now let's show you how we will do it in PowerShell and we're going to verify. So I'm not going to turn this off how I did it earlier. See, so automatic and this we're going to cancel because this should still be um, one, right? So <clears throat> let's fire PowerShell. We're going to run as, as administrator. And this is where I'm saying once you, if you can get this, working right and you start knowing your commands life becomes so much easier for you all right so basically this is the command that you want to uh oh i think i just messed that up never mind All right, so if you look at my screen, as you should be following, um, set item property and then the path. So if you remember earlier, this is the pathway that I walk you through um, when we were working inside of the registry, right? And then the name was allow right here. Not that one. Right there. See? Right there. And then we're saying we're going to change the value to zero, right? So 
going to hit enter and that actually took place so now this right here let's try to go ahead and refresh see now if you look at it it sets to zero perfecto that means he could have done this without having to go through all that clicking just using powershell to change the settings and life would have been easier all right these codes will be at the bottom um inside of the description later once um the video is posted and uploaded it's for your easy access all right so that takes care of this piece right here now we need to go ahead and fix through powershell we're going to fix this right here where automatic delay start we want to make sure we disable this right so when you're working with a service the first thing you want to do you want to stop the service and run it so we're going to stop that service so that it is no longer working right there and then we are going to disable it completely Enter. Now, all three of these commands, if you were supposed to run them together, it would take you through the ease of disabling data collection without having to do all these clicks. Now, let's just verify right here. This was earlier still automatic. Let's refresh. Now, as you see, when I refresh, it's disabled completely. And if you double click it and go in, it will also show you that it's disabled. So there you go. PowerShell works its magic. We use PowerShell just now to disable data collection. And that was tip number two. All right. All right, let's now move on. And um, at this point, it should be getting um, a little bit easier for you guys. Now, let's go ahead and close this out because we're done with that close this out i'm going to keep powershell open because we're going to be working some more inside of here now another thing i want to talk about is um speeding up apps that launches at the start so we can set this a good way as well as um just basically you can go in and turn off a whole bunch of apps or whatever um, but we have a command in PowerShell where we literally can um, set the values so that it basically speed up all the applications that launches at boot, right? So for this command, go ahead. All right, so this is what this one will look like. So basically, going back into the register, we're going to do some modification, right? And basically, we're just setting startup delay in milliseconds, the value to zero. All right, easy trip. So now that I got some red, this is telling me that it does not exist. Great. So how do we fix this? Easy. All we have to do is follow this pathway right here and then set it to zero okay so basically once you're here get item property this is where we're going serialize as you can see the name that we're going to create and then we're going to change the value to zero. So let's get it. So let's go to register editor. Going back in. So we're looking for HK local machine. So let's bring all this up. Go back into local machine, right? And we are going to go to software. And then we're going to go to Microsoft. And then we're going to go to windows current version and then we're looking for explorer and we are looking for 
serialized. So if serialized does not exist, right? And as you can see, it's not something that exists. Right? So that's too easy. On Explorer, you just want to go ahead and click new and we're going to create right here a new key. This key, we're going to rename it. We're going to call it serialize. There you go. Then, as long as this key falls under Explorer, then you should be fine. Right there. So S E R I A L I Z E. Now we need to create a new D word value, right? And it's going to be 32 bit. And we're going to call this startup. Delay. Right there's the startup. Delay and and then pretty much in msec right and then this value you need to set it to zero and click ok now earlier when we try to run this command it said it couldn't find it because this was never created so how do we double check if this will work let's change this value to one and click ok and then let's go back up here and let's see if we can find this now. There you go. So that means it found it and it set the series. So if I went back in here, see, I changed this manually earlier to one. Now, if I refresh this, it changed it to zero. So this was basically an easy fix. Well, if you see this, don't panic whenever you're running something. All you gotta do is just make sure the value exists right and then it's um good to go in fact most powershell scripts um will do like a check for you so if you have those nice powerful scripts that you are using you can literally check the register first or check whatever you're doing first before you actually make the edit all right so that covers speeding up apps that launches at boot all right now our next favorite topic is going to be um windows update service we're going to make sure that it is set to automatic now multiple ways you can go here start and do updates right windows update settings right there you will check for updates and all of these updates can install right go through and view the policies it is set by organization right it will tell you the behavior of how windows will perform um, for updates and so forth now we're just going to make sure that this is enabled and a quick partial script for this will be in a couple of times And I'll walk it through this one. All right, so service, basically it's a service and this Windows update service. And we're just selecting the top to set to automatic. Now, if you go back to services again, you should be able to also find this, right? So Windows installer right there, Windows update service is also right here. And it is set to manual right now, right? So we want to set this to automatic. So if you look, same thing, set to manual, trigger start. Let's go ahead and set this to automatic and then double check it. All right. No red this time, that means we're good. 
Now, like I said, you always want to double check. It's like doing math. So here you go. I want to refresh. And as you can see, this says manual. We're making sure it says automatic. And there we go. So once you refresh, it changes to automatic, right? Too easy. Now, really simple um, PowerShell way to do it. But like I said, all of these are simple little basic things you should know how to do um, when you're configuring your your Windows server box. All right, now um, something really e easy, but enabling remote management is the next process. All right, um, this command basically and now it enables. Um, PowerShell to do remote um, or remote management on your local computer, right? So basically, it's an easy command. You just enable PS enable PS remoting slash force, right? Easy way, and you can look this up if you want to later, just to understand what it is. But just for simplicity, it's just basically. Um, enabling PowerShell to perform remote management All right now after remote management I like to do remote desktop right so basically I like to enable remote desktop on my systems because then if I'm on one of my boxes on the outside and I'm trying to remote into these clients I can actually get into them if I'm not on the the, the the host itself right so another way right there if you type in remote desktop right there i'll show you that it's currently off right select the users whatever and like i said there's so many different ways you can do it but right here look see now let's close this and we are going to enable this through PowerShell. And all of these commands, I've already taken the time to actually write them out and test them so that it eases the process of me not sitting here typing them out line by line. And I know this is probably already boring, but I just don't want to bore you more to that. I just want to walk you through the process of using PowerShell to actually configure um, your boxes and you should be good. So hit enter. All right, so there we go. Um, this right here is going to enable remote desktop. So now, earlier, we need to check it. Remote desktop settings. All right, so this is remote desktop, right? It allows you to It allows you to connect to, um, uh, you know, your computers to connect to it later on. So you can add users here. Right. So let's go back one more check one more thing. So remote let's stop right there. So as you can see, Right here, remote desktop shows you this is check, this is check. That means I can remote and if I show you the settings, it says allow remote connections to this computer. Before this all happened, it wouldn't have let me do all of this. Okay, this because it probably would have said do not allow. All right? Same thing right there. Okay, so that's how you check to make sure that, you know, like I said, checks and balances, whatever command that you're using, you can check it also GUI versus PowerShell. Now, next pro, next thing I want to go over is, is uh, what's called user account control. Now, this can be annoying sometimes if you're trying to run a software, run an update, and it requires that you, it prompts you each time to, answer these questions 
right? So what I've taken the opportunity to do is basically enable the, basically it's, it's called enable LUA, but you want to actually disable the user account control on it. It helps because like I said, sometimes you're trying to run um, certain things and you just don't want to deal with it. All right, right there, user account control settings. See the settings right here? It will notify you every time there's a change that needs to happen to Windows. So can you imagine as a system administrator, every time you need to make a change to your box, it prompts you and then that little box sits in the background of your machine. And if you don't realize it stays there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of this. Right now, um, so basically, as you can see, I need to restart to turn it off because I've already set it. So you will see once you restart, now it says never. I know it's not recommended, but this is your lab. You're building out and to just make life a little bit easier, turn this off, okay? All right, now moving along. The next painful thing is what we need to work on is our firewall, right? Now, this can be a painful process too because all of these right here, they're happy green. When these are happy green and you're trying to make connections to your machine, you're trying to do a ping, um, any type of activity between machines, normally by default, your firewall is probably blocking the settings. Now, if you don't want to disable your firewall, you can specifically write rules to allow um, almost everything. But just think about how much configuration that you need. As an administrator, we don't really care about security that much. We do, but we let the security guys deal with the security and we take care of administration and networking, if that makes sense. So we build, put it together, and then once everything is finished, you take it to the security guys and then they harden the system and put on all the security and stuff like that. If you put on all the security and all the stuff while we're trying to build, it takes away from building, it, it's annoying. So it's best to build first, test, make sure everything works, and then apply your security afterwards, right? Don't apply this for the real world. Go by your, your um, follow your SOPs, follow your organizational policy. Everyone does it different. This is just how we're going to be doing this for the lab purposes. All right, so if you're looking at this, this is all greened up. And easy way to turn this off, you can go in and do the properties and you can turn all of these off. So you have domain, private, public, and these are the three behaviors that you will normally see. And basically you just go in and turn them off. I'm going to use PowerShell though to disable all of these at once because it's easier. And like I said, it makes life so much easier. So I'm setting all profiles, domain, public, private, enabled, false, right there, settings. So now when I go back to Windows Defender and I refresh, now everything is off, simple. And like I said, we are testing these commands as we go along. So later on, if you have to build out your labs, you've already tested them and you see that it works. So firewalls are off and we're good to go. Okay. Now, one thing I wanted to bring up is your time. So time is important when your domain controllers are, are trying to communicate. Um, a good rule is plus or minus five. Uh, what does that mean is that somewhere around five minutes higher or lower your domain controllers, they need to be synced up within that time frame so they can communicate. And normally, if your domain controllers have different times, they can give a lot of different um, red flags. They can give a lot of issues. And sometimes your machines, you don't want them to be shown different times 
unless you're building out like different i would say clusters that are in different time zone and you're using like sites and services that's a whole different approach because you might have a domain controller that's in that site where those clients can talk to the dc not going to get too deep into it just let you know set the time properly right so figure out your time zone it's really easy you just need to go to um i think it's time.com uh one of those timeanddate.com that's where you want to go so if you go to timeanddate.com you can figure out the time zones that you'll need right it will tell you what time zone you need to use for this command now i'm already I'm like for example i'm going to show you so this is set time zone id pacific standard time I am not in the Pacific Standard Time. I could be, but I am actually in Hawaii. So I'm going to do Hawaii. H A W E I I. Right? And I'm um, Hawaii Standard Time. That is my time zone. So I'm going to set my time zone to Hawaii Standard Time. Easy to figure this out. You can come here, just date and time. It will show you that this is good. And go. This is good. But then you see Pacific time is right there. That's where your time zone sets. See? And these are some of the little things you want to change. So I want to change it to Hawaii standard time. As you can see right now, it says Pacific. Let's close it. Okay, so it didn't like time zone ID. It was not found. So tell me it didn't like hawaii standard time don't know why um it is a time zone it says it was not found on the local computer all right so let's see what the local computer has to offer so okay so you see right there I, that's a problem see see it says hawaii but not hawaii time zone so it just says hawaii utc 1000 all right so let's set this back to pacific and basically it's just telling me that inside of the windows time it cannot find hawaii standard time so let's see if it takes hawaii time doesn't like hawaii so let's go with just hawaii okay so we just need to go and figure out the time zone all right so basically what i was getting is that it didn't like the id because the id what we're using is the name all right so if you look up your time zone you should see something like um if you go actually to to timeanddate.com right there you should see the offsets right here so you're either utc plus eight or your utc minus nine or just regular utc um okay so it seems like it doesn't like the name right so you might have to go with the actual id to match up what we're looking for so since i'm on hawaii standard time which is right here um i'm utc minus 10. okay so let's double check our code 
and I'm thinking it wants me to put UTC and um, should be able to take it so we can do UTC do minus UTC space minus 10 the only thing we'll probably get me for here is the space all right so minus 10 didn't like that okay let's see so it's that time zone id um utc minus 10 that should be our code um so let's see what we missed because it's not the name so we need to take the name out oh you know what so i did id but maybe i should have did time so right here instead of doing id right it should have been name it because the set time is on the name of why it's not at time because the id is completely different No, it didn't like that. Was not found on a local computer. Didn't like the name either. Um, so Hawaii was on the on the on it. it didn't like Hawaii either. Hmm. So it doesn't like the name um baby sometimes um this can be very funny with with um so i didn't like that time zone either So we can do we can do this. We can actually help. So we can do help. Let's get let's get this. So this is good troubleshooting right here. All right. So we're gonna do get um time zones. And we're gonna list available. Right? So let's see right there if it can tell us what we were going so all of these time zones are built in and now we need to figure out see the id it says plus 12 that's how it wanted it but it doesn't give me it doesn't give me what i'm looking for there's no Hawaii built in on the computer. So this is good troubleshooting guys, because here we are right into some, some red. And it's just a time zone, so let's figure it out together to see, okay, what time zone is actually in here that it will actually take. And as you can see, this is a great way of going through this and just figuring out. So you got Eastern Europe. Central Europe, Rome, Central Europe. All right, so we got Greenwich, and then you have UTC right there, which is basically universal time zone, right? So my time zone, like I said, I'm on the Hawaii side, Pacific showed up right here.
U.S. Eastern Eastern Standard Time showed up on the ID. So Mountain Standard Time is there. U.S. Pacific Pacific is there. Okay, so there you go, guys. That is where I went wrong, a spelling issue. And let me tell you, this is so funny, but it's real. It happens a lot. The ID was Hawaiian Standard Time. So initially, I'm here like, man, I think I had this what happened um because it felt it wrong so good way troubleshooting right time zone hawaiian standard time and he took it he's a troubleshooting right so this is good. Like I said, this is how you learn stuff. Um, you got to break it and then put it back together. All right. Now, as long as you're good to go, you right. That's how you do it. Now, we spent a little bit of time on that one. And the next command you want to use, we're going to set the date and the time. So this is very easy. Set date and then a date and then obviously you know whatever time it is in your time zone so right now it is it was the 23rd and i wrote this but it's past midnight and i'm here working with you guys so 04 24 2023 and then right now military time zone so this is zero zero two four yeah, and that's correct that is correctly the time it is after midnight. And there you go. That's how you set the time. We just want to make sure time is set correctly. Um, and then now uh, what we need to do is the next step. We are going to configure the NIC card. GUI version. And uh, um, I'm sorry, I didn't show you guys how to set the time GUI, but obviously, where I click the time, same thing, you just come to adjust time, and you can set it automatically. Uh, see, this got changed to Hawaii. Um, date and time format is right here. It will show you the time change, and then this is how you'll go in and change it, okay, on the GUI side. Now, setting the IP address right here on your system this is where you bottom right it's always right here it looks like this little computer with a a nick card plug on the left hand side basically that's the new version of what it looks like so right click it open up and we're going to go to ethernet you want to go to change adapter options or you can do change advanced shared options so if you click this first it takes you to the long process right here okay Everyone sees that. All right, so this is one way to look at these settings. You can turn these on. Go back here and change adapter options, Ethernet. Now, you need to make note of this if you're doing this in PowerShell. 
the name of the nick card is going to be very important because whenever you need to set this by default it will say ethernet but if you're like me that likes to rename stuff to make it matches then later on you can um you won't be able to identify it so especially if you got more than one nick card all right so what you want to do is go in here go to properties and you're going to go to internet protocol version 4 which is um the area that you'll go to set your ip this is where you'll go and you'll set basically you'll do the following you punch in your numbers right 192.168.1.100 the tab because it's a class c and then we'll do 192.168.1. That SL router is one. And then our DNS, our gateway, you can add your DNS down here the same way and so forth. This is how you do it the manual way, the click click version. Okay. And basically, you want to set it right here. All right. Now, like I said, we're going to work on doing everything in PowerShell so that you get the hang of learning how to do this PowerShell way. Now, nothing is set right now. I want to show you, right? So, what we're going to do, go back to PowerShell. All right, so we're going to do a new interface, Ethernet. Like I said, it needs to be matched up. We're going to add the IP address of what we just worked on, prefix 24. Okay, so always remember that this is very important. Default gateway will be 192.168.1.1. Right? So, hit enter. If everything goes well, I will show you that this took place and it was good to go so now let's go back and check this remember we just went in here and looked at this there you go all we did was put in right here the addresses to match up so that these can come in from powershell now you can do the same thing here for the dns servers okay and for the dns servers as long as you know your dns servers you can put them in so if you wanted to set these right now i'm going to cancel this so that you can see that i don't have anything set in there now what you want to do is Set DNS server address, alias in the name. So this also needs to match up this. And then the server addresses. So after the server addresses, let's say our first server um, IP is 192. Actually, we need to do multiple. So let's go with 192.168.1. Dot Let's say our, our DNS was 30, right? It's 31, right? So I am um, basically you add you add your IPs like this, right? and there you go so your dns servers now will also be set this way so how do we check let's go back in um let's close this out and so let's see if we messed it up all right so what do we leave off we left off something all right let's see Type this command back. 
Um, All right, so sometimes when you have multiple, you may have to put in the brackets. Let's see if it took. Okay, so I didn't like that. Um, it could also be the space in between these as well. There you go. All right, so very funny situation. I know that sometimes spacing could be an issue. So as you can see, populated and took these. Um, all you gotta do is just remember that between the two DNS servers, um, there's no space. Okay, so put your brackets in like we did and took the spaces out and there you go, populated. So then this is how you set up your, your NIC card. NIC card is good to go. Everything is set up the way it's supposed to be, and you're you're good. All right. Now, I think we're getting there because we we're making good progress, right? Uh, we got our IP set up, right? And the last thing that's on our books that we're going to do is for this piece is renaming the computer now i like to leave this for last why because it requires that the computer is restarted right so normally by default Your computer, if you view your computer name, it will show you, right? That's your computer name. The ugly name, but it's just made whenever the computer is created. If you had a script when you're doing like MDT and stuff like that, you can change all of this to go off however you want by your policies. But for this demo's purposes, we need to change this because it needs to match up to DC01. Okay. So over here, script that we'll use rename computer, new name, and then right here, computer name, we need to call this DC01 because that's going to be the name of the computer. All right, now there you go. Rename the computer. It says the changes will take effect after you restart the computer. And this is why I said I like to leave this very one for the last because after you do all the rest of the configuration, you rename the computer and it is good to go. Now If you go to view PC, just type computer name and view your PC name, right? It's going to stay the same because that is still the name. It does not take effect until your, um, your PC is restarted. Now, as you can see right here, I want to show you. When you look at it over here, this is the true set. It's telling you that this is the device name right now. At the bottom, you see DC01. That means the change is about to happen after. So this is going to get named to here. Over here, when you look at it this way in more advanced settings, you will see that the full computer name is here. And it's saying, though, that this will not take effect until you restart your computer and i think i have everything so far um
there's only one last tweak that I like to do. It's not nothing too crazy. Um, but I think it's also something that you should tell you. So this is basically turning on network discovery. So when you look at your computer over here earlier, and we went to our network settings and we went to change this right here, it says that when this is on, computers can see other computers across the network. I like to also turn this box on right there, right? So I'm gonna leave this setting as well, and we can turn this on also in PowerShell. I'm telling you, using PowerShell is so amazing. So basically this is what the command would be, right? And, oh, it doesn't like this. Uh, what did we miss? There's the term set network is not recognized. Maybe it was a typo. Let's see. Um, I believe I'm trying, I'm trying to see if I if I turn it on. Yeah, so normally it's um I think it's set network connection maybe, not network discovery. Um Sometimes it could be the set network connection. <laughs> okay, so like I said, that is one thing um, that I like to also add on to turning on uh, network discovery right it's not something that you really have to do it's just something that i always just thought it's pretty cool to also have as well um the network discovery firewall well it's not a firewall but it's just a simple command so I think this might be the right um the right one to use. So it seems like it turned everything on. Um network discovery said it. Well, maybe I messed up. This is still turned off, but firewall is probably back on. Let's see. Okay, so these are still off. Okay, good to go. But not a big deal. You can all just check that, like I said. And um, and get it working, right? But it's just something I always find pretty nifty. But anyways um thank you guys for watching after i restart this system this is the basics to get your system ready prepared and going this is all you have I, I know it took a little bit longer than it was supposed to and that's just because you know i'm trying to go through the partial scripts with you so that you can um learn it as well um i made a couple of errors here but that's good because we 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 practice together and we fix them together okay um i'm gonna post all of the commands that i've used in here also in the video so that you can you can see 
what we 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 worked on today right guys don't forget to like and subscribe ring that bell button so you can receive notifications every time i post a new video keep this series going um please share it with somebody else tell somebody about it and uh, we appreciate everything that you do to help us stay online um all you gotta do is just subscribe and share all right um this wraps up basically the configurations to get your your box up and running so without further ado i'm going to um restart this machine right here and um you can also use powershell to restart it too if you wanted to right um so normally it's actually no i think it's this one shut down and then you give it like a timer so shut down will give you a time and then you can do however long you want for it to run so if you're trying to do this one to so just restart i'm going to shut down slash s um slash t slash t and then we're going to do 30. so basically let's do 10. so basically what this is going to do um it's going to shut down the computer um with the option of 10 seconds right if i got it wrong i don't remember i think so there you go so everything that we did is going to shut it down reset the machine and everything is good to go and that's about it guys thank you so much for watching and we will catch you next time